today on the Oprah Book Club. Oh, okay, the main character was so much like me. Oh, like a mirror. It was a deja vu experience. I didn't really like it. Exactly. What? What? <laughs> I, I think Susie just said that she didn't like it. Oh, I, I didn't really like it. Well, but it's an Oprah. Oprah oh, I know, I know. No, it's Oprah. Uh, you know, maybe you're confused about your feelings. Okay, don't you remember that show about people who don't like Oprah books and why they are wrong? <laughs> Cut the hegemony. This is the MENC Teacher's Shelf. Hello, and welcome to the premiere episode of MENC's Teacher's Shelf. I'm your host, Matt Barbosa, and every month I'll be keeping literacy in your world by discussing a variety of books on music and music education as we know it. This month's episode focuses on music's impact on the human brain, including two books by author, neurologist, and guitarist Daniel J. Levitin on the mind-boggling importance of music in human evolution, culture, and society. The first of Levitin's books, This Is Your Brain on Music, The Science of a Human Obsession, focuses on the innumerable connections between how and why we listen to and create music in the human brain. Levitin uses both his expertise as a neurologist, guitarist, and a citizen of popular culture to explain such phenomena as the how and why earworms, such as the McDonald's jingle, get stuck in our head, the difference in anatomy between musicians and non-musicians, the subtle ways composers trick and tantalize our brains, how and why we can emotionally attach our identity to one piece of music but not another, and the psychological, social, and cultural benefits of maintaining a musically friendly life. Between his Whitfield banter and references ranging from U2 and Prince to Palestrina and Stravinsky, Levitin tackles the subject of music's evolution in our species. Levitin mentions several different evolutionary theories, including Steven Pinkner's theory that music is simply an incidental offshoot of language, or auditory cheesecake, that has little effect on our species. But more importantly, Levitin suggests a new compelling theory, that the evolution of music was necessary for our species' survival and monumental in the evolution of human nature. Which leads us to his next book. In The World in Six Songs, How the Musical Brain Created Human Culture, Levinin takes this theory and expands it, claiming there are six types of songs. Songs of friendship, joy, comfort, religion, knowledge, and love. And that these six songs were paramount in the evolution and survival of our species. Levitin's second book is filled with extremely entertaining and brilliant writing, and is much more accessible than the first. Levitin cites everyone from Paulo Freire to Csikszentmihalyi to Borat and the Animaniacs to Ren and Stimpy in this book, and uses numerous and often hilarious stories from his own life and the often jolting world events around us, from the Vietnam War to the 2004 tsunami. Six Songs is extremely well-balanced culturally, and truly shows the importance of music to us as a species, as well as our moral right to be a part of it. Both of Levitin's books are obviously great tools for music advocacy, but are much more than that. These books will help provide the reader with a strong foundation of why we teach what we teach, and the necessity of what we do, and can therefore open up a whole new mindset of how we teach. Now don't go anywhere, as coming up we have one more cover to turn with Dr. Oliver Sacks, but for now, a word from our sponsors. Do you want to feel so conscientiousized? Then check out CPME Light. Same great taste, half the steps. CPME Light. Embrace your other. Hello and welcome back to MENC's Teacher's Shelf. Now we turn our attention to famous neurologist and author Dr. Oliver Sacks and his latest book, Musicophilia. Musicophilia, Tales of Music and the Brain, similar to all of Dr. Sacks' famous works on psychology, such as The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, is a collection of odd, strange, and amazing case studies in the neurology and psychology of music. From the unbelievable story of Clive Wearing, a man with a two-second memory span due to a brain tumor who can miraculously remember how to play and conduct a variety of lengthy pieces, to the woman consumed by amusia, a disorder which makes music sound like an endless cacophony of harmless and useless noise. Sachs explores the healing powers of music and concerns with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases and includes a wonderful chapter on Williams Syndrome, a rare disability that results in hypermusical and social tendencies but a severe lack in cognitive function. 
Sachs's journey through these bizarre and extraordinary cases serves as a true testament to the powers of our art and the necessity of an education system that not only includes, but encourages it. As with Levitin's books, I really, really enjoyed Dr. Sachs's reflective journal of case studies. The story that stuck most with me was that of Matt Giordano, a young man my age who suffered his entire life from severe Tourette syndrome. Mr. Giordano's trying tale, which included a guilt-ridden suicide attempt before he was even a teenager, culminated into a surprising rescue by music. Through percussion, Matt was able to quell his tics and now uses this power to teach other Tourette's patients how to deal with their own tics. I highly recommend this book to anyone looking into music education, especially those of you who are looking into special education or music therapy. Well, my part stops here, but that doesn't mean yours does. Below in the comments section, you will see various links to the Amazon.com pages for all of these books in tonight's episode, as well as other YouTube videos on Dr. Sachs' musicophilia and some articles of interest that correspond with all three of the books discussed tonight. Feel free to leave some feedback or discuss the books in the comment section. And if you have a book you'd like to see on the MENC teacher's shelf, email me at barbosa, B-A-R-B-O-S-A, at rider.edu. Thank you for turning on and tuning in, and make sure to catch next month's episode on innovative reform in music education. Goodbye for now, and as Bill and Ted once said, be excellent to one another.